Uh, welcome to NCPA members and guests. My name is Chad Hussain. I'm going to be the host for the session today. In a world where the publishing business model seems permanently uh, under pressure, using Gen AI in publishing is no longer really seen as a novel uh, idea, but rather a practical way to get uh, to be more competitive. So today we're going to have a chat about that, or I'm going to be talking about that. We're really going to look about how publishers feel about AI uh, in publishing and some examples of where publishers have used uh, AI uh, in publishing to their advantage. And finally, you know, we are a tech company and we, we have built some of those functions within our technology. And we'll show you what Quintype has actually built and some of the clients that are actually using it. Bit of housekeeping, there's going to be some polls at some point uh, during the session. So if you're ready to just make a quick vote, it'll pop up on your screen. That would be great. And if you can uh, ask any questions, if you can put them in the chat window, we'll gather them. If we can't answer them directly on this, then we'll get our tech team to give you a more comprehensive answer. And we'll send that through at the end of the session. Okay, so firstly, you know, let's explain a very little bit about uh, who Quintype is. It's not a Quintype pitch by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it helps for context in terms of who we are. Uh, you know, we are a publisher tech company and we're, we're based really out of Asia. Uh, the majority of our clients are coming across Asia around the world. We have fairly uh, sizable global reach, <clears throat> but, um, you know, we work with lots of languages. We work with lots of different types of publishers, different sizes. Uh, we, we're kind of doing about 2 billion page views these days through our through our platforms. Um, you know, and at the heart of our business is a digital first CMS. So the uh, the notion of having AI capabilities is very much uh, central to what we provide to our publishers. Now, the unique insight that we have when it comes to, let's say, um, talking about AI within a publishing context is really through the fact that in the last six months, we have been virtually everywhere. Dubai, Delhi, Abu Dhabi, Taiwan, Philippines, London, Miami, Colorado. We, we've been to many, many events and we've been speaking about AI within a publishing context to many of those uh, publishing groups that we've been speaking to, whether it's B2B, national publishers or, or very parochial publishers, we've been speaking to lots of them. And I think what we've got is quite a good barometer reading in terms of AI in publishing at the moment for a lot of newsrooms. And we want to share that uh, today alongside some, some research that was done by one of by some of our partners, Wanifra, and we're going to share that knowledge as well. Okay, so the agenda today, we're going to look at some sentiments, look at some publisher insights, some positive things that have come out of uh, Gen AI. Uh, we're going to look at some examples where AI is being used by, by publishers around the world. And we're also going to look at some of those concerns, whether they're, whether they're material or real concerns, we should look at them. And then finally, we do believe there is a consensus. And we do believe that there's something consistent happening across the uh, publisher world, irrespective of where you are in the world. I think we want to share that consensus. And then we'll go into a bit of a quintype demo in terms of what we've built with our Sage AI uh, functions. Okay, so uh, this stat is quite interesting in, in, in many ways because it echoes sentiment amongst publishers you know, across the world. Gartner's basically estimating that 25% of all internet content is gonna be by AI in the next few years. Uh, whereas Europol is estimating 90% of all online content by 2026 is going to be synthetic or synthetically generated. Uh, you know, whereas the Europol number looks reasonably high, uh, the Gartner number looks reasonably low. And, and I think somewhere in between, we get this kind of huge disparity of, well, nobody's using synthetic content or uh, everybody's using synthetic content. I think the reality is it's somewhere in between. Similarly, we get this sentiment from nearly all the publishers that we've spoken to in, in the sense that they kind of echo what is happening from a lot of major, uh, major tech uh, companies out there. Elon Musk kind of referencing fear quite a lot in terms of AI poses maybe an existential threat to human civilization. Whereas you look at Microsoft and it's really pushing AI as the mainstream 
uh, it, it, as uh, as part of uh, well, obviously they've got a vested interest in Gen AI, but it's part of the mainstream work and workflow these days. And and obviously, Google with Sundar Pichai explaining it's a pivotal moment in in Gen AI, uh, uh, likening Gen AI to to the likes of electricity or fire. It may be not quite as pivotal as that. But I think what we can see is that in the publishing world, this starts to represent an opportunity. And more and more publishers that we're seeing are using it as an opportunity to give them some kind of advantage, either against uh, their existing publisher competitors or trying to compete for audiences against the likes of social. Okay, so let's look at some data. And this data is from the WANIFRA survey that was that was published last year, and also from the Reuters Institute of Media and Tech Trends, uh, which was published towards the end of last year as well. 49% of newsrooms already using Gen AI. That's according to the, the WANIFRA survey. Uh, that, so half the newsrooms that they surveyed uh, are already using Gen AI. Uh, actually, I think from, from our own evidence, it's more like the Reuters number here where they're saying that that number is more like 67%. So two thirds of all newsrooms are using AI or Gen AI to some extent within their newsroom. Now that might not be part of their tech stack. It may be independent of their tech stack, but they're already using it as part of their editorial workflow. 70% of newsrooms see it as a helpful tool to the actual newsroom. So that's a pretty positive stat all, all round. 82% of newsrooms predict a change in their role and responsibilities are coming. And interestingly, at the same time, management is also predicting that there isn't gonna be a loss or redundancies in the publishing space. More likely there's gonna be an adaptation of some roles. A phrase that's been used quite a lot in, in, in uh, Gen AI circles really is that, it, that journalists will have a research assistant uh, on hand. So it may well be, um, making the, the, the job of the intern redundant and less so the job of the journalist. Okay, so it should be a poll coming up on your screen. So Push Courage, if you could enable that poll up on the screen. And what we're, what we're asking you to do is vote on some of these topics. In which areas do you think AI tools could help your newsroom? Now you can choose one or two. If you feel like all of these are important, then choose them all. And if you could, uh, if you could just make a vote on those now, that would be great, and then I'll run through. Um, I'll run through some of these. Um, if you could put the poll back up, uh, push garage again. I'll run through some of these insights from the Wanifra survey. So, when they conducted a similar kind of poll, the information that came through as that as um, uh, well, the first and obvious thing is the disparity between all these areas is not that large. Um, you know, and I think from text creation or simplified research, the kind of research element of the heavy lifting element was, was possibly the most, most valuable area for a lot of publishers. And then we're into kind of efficiency, workflow efficiency, text correction. These kind of concepts are, uh, appeared reasonably similar as well uh, at, at 43%. And then finally, we've got translation, topic ideation, content creation, the kind of pure ideation part of Gen AI that was at 32%. But I think we're increasingly seeing more and more translation being popular in uh, as, as publishers see that they can possibly attract a whole brand new audience with the same content that they produce. Okay, so just to read the, read the summary of the results here, we've got the top performer here is workflow efficiency. Text correction is, is ranked in a similar place. Content creation, okay, interesting, content creation is at 25%. Topic ideation is at 44%. Translation at 38%. And again, personal, more personalization or interaction at a very low level. So it actually parallels uh, the group that we've got here. It actually parallels quite well with the one effort survey that, that was uh, conducted with a, with a slightly larger group. Okay, so I share them results. Right. All right. So let's have a quick look at how some of the some other names are using AI within publishing. I don't know if you've heard of Bloomberg Cyborg. We we run the the, the Bloomberg um, 
we run the Bloomberg um, uh, CMS for Bloomberg in India. And Bloomberg Cyber uh, is an artificial intelligence tool that really starts to look at, analyze uh, financial reports and financial data, and it crafts a new story from that. Now, it's estimated that Bloomberg is a third of its content that Bloomberg publishes is automated. So they're using this and they have been using this for some time. Washington Post uses a, a robot journalist. It's called Heliograph. It publishes 850 articles uh, a year. The Globe and Mail is basically taking away the decisions that are made by editors for their homepage uh, content selection. It's using AI and it's using a tool called Sophie that's making those decisions. And apparently they've seen a 17% increase in their click-through rates. Forbes is using Bertie. This is quite clever. Bertie is essentially an AI powered CMS that's reading the content of the writer. It's reading the content of the journalist and then it's recommending topics to that specific author so that they can write follow up articles or they can reference previously written articles and suggest new headlines for that for that content creator. Now, Forbes are reporting that they've doubled their monthly visitors after rolling out Bertie. And then we've got Memorelia and Health Day. Health Day is a US publisher that's focusing on obviously health content, but it's always been in English, but the content travels anywhere. So they're starting to look using, through Quintype, publishing in Spanish, publishing in Japanese, publishing in different languages. And they're experimenting on how they're gonna build an audience with the same content that they publish in English. Now, health content is, is usually very, very factually driven, so what they're using the Gen AI for is not the content creation, but really the translation, okay? And I'll talk a little bit more about that because it's quite important because it's not just uh, translate and publish because you still need a, a fair bit of human oversight. And the opposite is true with Me Morelia. Me Morelia is a, is a Mexican publisher that publishes in Spanish uh, and they're looking to develop from exactly the same content an English language public uh, uh, an English language for audience as well. So they're using Gen AI not for ideation but for translation. Okay, so let's look at some concerns. All right, so if we got, I think we've got another poll that we can bring up here, uh, Push Garage. If you could launch the other poll, and again, look, we're looking at newsrooms' top concerns. And, you know, what are your major concerns about using Gen AI tools? Is it inaccuracy of information? Is it plagiarism, data protection? Is it the threat of job security? Do you feel that uh, this, this is going to replace uh, people? Or is there something else that we, we, we haven't thought about? So if you could, you could make your, um, if you could make your uh, selections now, I'm just going to briefly cover some of the things that we we um, uh, uncovered when we were talking to publishers literally from around the world, a lot of them don't understand what the value exchange is with AI. So if, if an AI is training itself on your content, what do they get specifically out of that? And it's quite a legitimate concern. Is AI in publishing at the service of the audience or is it at the service of the publisher? And I think it's a bit of both in all honesty. Inaccuracy, hoax, pressures on uh, to publish, the pressure to publish is always going to be there. The, the pressure to publish quickly uh, and, 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 and more content is probably always going to be there. Will that lead to inaccuracy? If there's inaccuracy within the AI, a lot of people are saying, well, that gets pushed through into um, a fact-checking environment. And I think uh, you know the, there's some answers to that as we come through this presentation. I think one thing is true. That it's a largely unregulated environment right now. So from the publishers that we spoke to, very few, if any, have any kind of internal uh, structure in place to, to advise their journalists or content teams how to use Gen AI. And I don't see there's any public bodies or industry bodies that are, that are advising people in terms of uh, journalists, in terms of what is the best way to use Gen AI. Okay, I'm gonna share these uh, results and then I'm just gonna go into the WANEFRA survey and, and, and parallel that with the results that we've just got from this group. So inaccuracy of information, unsurprisingly, uh, and the quality of that content is the top performing one. And that parallels perfectly with uh, the group here. 
Plagiarism, copyright infringement was next at 67%. Again, that parallels almost perfectly with the group here. So these seem to be fairly legitimate and consistent concerns. Data protection and privacy is the next one. Threat of job security is at 38%. It's at 53% here. Uh, so, so maybe there are some legitimate concerns in terms of is the, is the uh, AI functionality going to start replacing jobs? Well, we can only answer this, I think, from the perspective of a tech company as well. And that is, we have absolutely no interest in creating AI tools that replace content creators. I think what we're looking to do is empower uh, journalists and content creators to supercharge their capabilities, to give them a personal assistant and have those tools into their editorial workflow so their output can be more creative, and more productive uh, and, and certainly increase their output with the same level of resources as, as they've had before. Okay, but very interesting that this group parallels, you know, the, the Wanifra survey. Okay, let's keep looking at this in terms of, is there a consensus? Well, I think there is a consensus in all honesty. Um, the mundane, the repetitive, and the time consuming is actually best done by, by uh, an artificial intelligence. Um, it, it, it starts to speed up those long winded tasks. And if you can look at you, what you're doing, and I'll give you some examples of that, particularly when you're looking at meta information, uh, meta information that, that's geared up for SEO optimized for Google, then I think when I'll show you this as an example, you'll see that it's better that that's done by Gen AI. The speed of which Gen AI can do a task is phenomenal. So huge amounts of quantitative or qualitative data or a translation of every article that you publish can be done literally in the click of, uh, a couple of clicks. Uh, you know, if you're looking at a, a long speech, for example, if you're looking at a, a state of the union speech and you're, you've got the whole speech as a press release and you're saying, right, listen, just give me that as, as, as five bullet points, Gen AI can do that literally in a matter of seconds. So it can reduce large volumes of content uh, for a major event or a, or, a, or a sports tournament or even a large speech, and it can bring that down into a very small amount. Now, it's a good servant and a bad master. And this is something fairly consistent that we, we've, we've had for exponents of Gen AI in the sense that human interaction or human intervention has to be there in order for the Gen AI process to be a success in publishing. So there is a degree of handholding uh, that comes within this process. No matter how good it is, you still need that human to have a look at that content. And what we're seeing is nuance, humor, satire, all those things that related to an audience that you would you would personalize for an audience, it doesn't do particularly well. And, and if you're really writing co uh, content for an audience that you know well, then sometimes AI content can appear a little bit wooden. And finally, I think the doomsday predictions are a little bit overstated. I think, you know, most people were a little bit worried about the fact that this is going to take over and we're going to have these robot journalists writing content. It, it's, it's not there. I don't see it's going to be there. I don't know any tech companies that are building for a, a pure play uh, scenario whereby it's going to replace the, the quality content that a journalist could write. Okay, let's have a look at um, what Quintype is building. I'm going to play a little bit of a video now and we'll be able to get a, an idea of the types of things that Quintype is building uh, in their CMS. Some of it we've already built, some of it we're, we're currently in the process of, of building and, and releasing in the next couple of months. But I'll just play this video and we can have a look at this in, in, uh, in real time on the CMS. Writing stories can be challenging, but fret not. Introducing Sage, your very own editorial companion, powered by artificial intelligence. Let's take a look, shall we? Trouble crafting your story? Simply select the text and click on auto-generate. Sage will convert simple statements into quality content while preserving the original message. What's more, Sage can even translate an entire story from one language to any other language in just a click, ensuring the intended meaning and tone is retained. 
And that's not all, Sage is equipped to generate meta titles, meta descriptions, and even push notifications effortlessly, so you can focus on what truly matters, writing compelling stories. Join us as we embark on a journey into the world of AI, be it generating title and summary, automatically generating web stories, or an intelligent search. Sage can do it all. Ready for this AI revolution? Talk to us. Quintype. Okay, let me uh, let me jump into writing stories. Can be pause that. Let me just jump into a, a demo, and uh, I'll show you a little bit of what some of those functions actually look like. Okay, so this is the the Quintype CMS. I'll just uh, go into the. So I've got a whole load of stories here, and this is a, 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 some swim lanes in terms of the editorial workflow. These are open stories and submitted stories. This is a story that, let's say, I've just written. I just, I just added the content uh, of this story. And actually, I've taken this story from a UK publisher. It's not the best title in the world uh, for this particular story. And you know, as I look through, as I put my content in this story together, there's a bit of social in there, there's a few embeds in there, there's a video in there, and there's quite a lot of wordy content uh, in this particular story. The first thing is, we, what we've built is we can just click on this magic wand, and then what's happening is the Gen AI is going to read the content of the story and then give me a title, which is the best appropriate title. Uh, let me just get rid of that the best appropriate title that goes with the content. So if I just click on that. So again, it's giving me a title which they think is a, as the right length and it's ultimately um, paralleling the content that has been written. Similarly, we can do that with the, uh, with the subtitle as well. So if I get rid of the subtitle, I can just use Gen AI to start giving me subtitles as part of that story. Now, if you don't like these, then by all means you can just get rid of them you know, and you can keep going, you can use your own title. But the idea is that if you've got a long form piece of content and you're not quite sure what's the best or most appropriate title from a search perspective, just get Gen AI to do it. It'll make it a whole lot easier. Okay, so let's say I've got this large piece of content here. Uh, it's come from a press release. I'm not entirely happy with the way that the content is written. I can get this paraphrased in seconds. I, again, I just click the magic wand. And what's happening is, is that the content is being read and, and it's rewriting the content and saying, right, how about this as an option for you? And, uh, and it's giving me options to rewrite large amounts of, uh, of structured content. So again, I'll take this large piece of content here. It's a bit wordy. I maybe want to reduce the word count. I could configure the AI to reduce the word count. In fact, it's reduced that word count there and it's kept the essence of the content intact. Now, if you're in a rush to publish and you've got quite a lot of stories to get through, then this is really about workflow efficiency, just making your job easier. It doesn't mean that you're going to go publish this immediately. It still needs to be read. But it's one of those areas where you can very quickly add, add those bits of content to that story. Okay, if I go to the manage area here and I want this content to be discovered, I want to add a meta title to this. Now, in our experience, Journalists, content creators, they're great at writing stories or telling stories. They're not so great at writing meta titles, meta descriptions, and meta keywords. Um, it, what we tend to see is some people are good at writing that, that uh, information to make sure the story is discoverable. Um, some people are bad at doing it, and some journalists don't do it at all. So if you're talking about a competitive advantage, then really we're talking about writing a piece of content that gets indexed by Google and it gets it gets read by, by the search engines because it's got the right meta title and the right meta description. In this case, get Gen AI to do it. So if we just click on the magic wand, it's going to write us a, a meta title. And again, if I just click on the magic wand, it's going to write us a meta description to go with that particular story. Okay, and you can configure these in all sorts of different ways. If you feel like, oh, that's a little bit long, I want, I want that to be rewritten, I can, just, I can just redo it again. But what we're seeing is when we open this up to a lot of our publishers and we gave them free tokens in their CMS and said, go and play with this, they've all started using it. 
they've all started using it because it brings a level of consistency on every single piece of content that goes through the newsroom. And that becomes a competitive advantage. That becomes the difference. It starts to pull away that it may be a one or two percent difference, uh, you know, on, on in January. But by, by December uh, of this year comes around, it starts to become a eight or nine percent difference because every single piece of content has been uh, structured correctly for its meta title and meta descriptions. We're actually working on the meta keywords as well, slightly less important than, than titles and descriptions. Okay, similarly, you can do the same with, with uh, push notifications. So if I delete these, for example, um, and I've written a, a story and I want a push notification going out, I can just click on uh, the, the magic wand and AI is actually writing the message and it's writing the title of the push notification. Similarly, you can write the social message as well. So if you want a social description, you know, in our system, we can post directly to Twitter and we can post directly to, uh, to, to Facebook. You can, you can similarly do, do that and you can, you can write those social descriptions directly from the CMS using Gen AI. Okay, so finally, one last thing. Um, if I go to the, um, the main page and our, our main stories here, if I just click on the hamburger menu here, I can translate any of these stories into any language I want. In this case, I'm going to trans I'm going to translate this story into Spanish. So I'll just it's a story. Let's say that's already been published. So I just click it into Spanish, and now the story is going to come up, and the entire story that I just show you is going to be in Spanish. Okay, and that goes into that goes into my Spanish workflow. So translated into Spanish, and there's the uh, the, the the story about the conservatives in Spanish. So literally at the click of a button, you can translate any of the stories into whatever language you want to translate them. So much so you could even do a news feed. So if you have a feed coming from um, in English and you want to do a translation in Spanish or any other language, we can just use Gen AI to do that. And it's all part of the editorial workflow. So where once upon a time translation was there and it was outside of the editorial workflow, what we're doing is we're using Gen AI to bring those functions into the CMS, into the editorial workflow and making it super easy for publishers now to start creating audiences in different languages. And it, you know, there's no limit to the languages that you can create your content for, depending on what content you've got. If it's global content, you can do that. If you've got uh, a geography or you're in a part of the world where you've got Spanish speakers, then you could say, listen, we've never really addressed that. You're publishing in English, but now you can address that and you can publish in Spanish as well. Okay, let me go jump back to uh, our, our presentation. So a couple of things, also generating metadata, you've seen that, paraphrasing content, you've seen that, intelligent prompts uh, is, is something that we're working on, uh, auto language translations, you've seen that from a story level into any language, uh, intelligent search is something that we're working on where you're, you're getting meaningful search results very quickly, uh, semantically matching really the search query with the, with the story's context. Uh, tags, headlines, subheadlines. This is where Gen AI can make a difference to your publishing world without, without compromising the editorial integrity of what the journalist is writing. It's just an assistant to help them achieve what they're trying to do from content discoverability. Okay, and our final probably take here, uh, you know, before we get into a Q and A, is uh, participate in these experiments. Uh, we 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 basically opened uh, tokens up for all of our publishers on Quintai, and they're they're all participating. Nearly ninety percent of our publishers are participating in experimenting in in AI tools, and you know, and I think this is a, a good healthy thing to do. In, in participating in, well, where, where do we get an advantage? What can we actually try to do? Can we produce more stories than we than we produced before with the same resource and with the same people? And this is what we're really encouraging people to do. Okay, so let's jump into a Q&A. Oh, so one last thing is we're gonna be in the US quite a lot. I'm personally gonna be in the US quite a lot. Uh, in April, we're in, we're in Phoenix, 
Uh, we're then in Chicago for the Niche Media Conference. The mega conference is in Phoenix. And then we're doing a whole load of stuff, you know, in, uh, in, in Delaware, in Maryland. I think we're also in, uh, in, in New York State as well. Uh, we're at a whole lot of publisher events. If you're around in any of them events or you'd like to have a chat with me about any of the things that we're doing at Quintive, we're more than happy to, to connect uh, either now or when we're on US soil. Okay, let's. Uh, have we got any questions, Push Garage, that, that we have from the audience? Is there anything in the chat window that you can, you can open up? Yes, Chad, there are a couple of questions. So one is, what are some existing examples of good, comprehensive, ethical AI policies for a newsroom? Okay, um, but it, it's a difficult one in terms of uh, pure, pure ethics, but I, I think I think the thing that you, you've got to acknowledge straight away is human oversight is part of the story. So, so if you're being creative with Gen AI, we're advocating for human oversight to be part of that. We're never advocating for the fact that content needs to be created. In terms of ethical guidelines, there has to be some sort of public education or there has to be some guideline from your existing editor in terms of well, what do you currently use for fact checking, for example. If you use two sources for fact checking or three sources for fact checking, we would advocate that you maintain that, but you've got to be quite diverse with your fact checking. I wouldn't just use the Gen AI for the fact checking because essentially it could it could leave you open to or exposed to the fact that gen ai could be wrong in the first place so i still think there's some things that still need to be worked through uh we're more than happy to share we can ask some of our publisher groups what they're using in terms of guidelines and we're more than happy to share that with this particular group cool thanks chad there's another question where it's saying do you have any insights on using ai to create all content automatically that is automatic content creation per se yeah i mean essentially you can use gen ai to to create content and, and we're working on that at the moment so at the moment i think the, fir the, the first and easiest thing to do is look at things like efficiency and workflow and using ai as an assistant but we we're already at the process of going beyond that and saying what should i be writing about and I think when you're able to harness data from the bid stream or you're harnessing data from search, and then let's say you're writing a, a section for health or sport, it should be able to tell you, you should be writing about sleep apnea uh, because that's the most popular thing from a search perspective at the moment. And then you should be able to go to Gen AI and say, right, give me, give me a base article to, to, to write about sleep apnea. Now, if you're not an expert on sleep apnea already, which I don't think you would be, you know, Gen AI is a very good starting point. It will give you the basis for you to write a piece of content. And that's what we're that's what we're working towards now, where we can get to the point where we can intelligently advise content creators what should you be writing about, as well as enhancing what they're already writing. Cool. Thanks, Chad. Another question is, how do users access their translated stories? Can you set up a different site or magazine for them? Yeah, yeah, we can. Yeah. So so typically, you know, we, we haven't gone into all the different things that Quintag does, but we do a, a no code front end. So basically, we can spin up a front end in a week. Uh, you know, we can spin up your front end website in a, in a week. It's a templatized uh, uh, system and about half of the publishers that we work with use it because it's super flexible. So if you want to, if you had a CMS and you have a front end and you're publishing your content and you say, right now we want a Spanish version, then we literally, we would just attach you either a, a, a different CMS, a Spanish uh, version of Quintype, and that would publish to a, a front end, which we would also build for you. As I say, it would literally take us a week to, 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 to pull that together. It's, it's almost no time whatsoever. Cool. Thanks, Chad. We'll take a couple of more questions and then we'll close the uh, webinar for today. Okay. Uh, the okay. question is, how much is the cost for this AI module? Okay, so we work on tokens. So we work on like $10 for, uh, uh, you know, 1,200 tokens. And, you know, if you're doing a fairly sizable translation, that might use, you know, 50 tokens up. But if you're just using meta titles and meta, meta descriptions, it literally pens. So... You know, we're, 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 we're doing calculation now on, on what our publishers are using, but no one's spending more than $100 for, 
at the moment, $150 on their AI capability. Uh, that may well increase as, uh, you know, they're, they're accelerating their usage of the AI and presumably that, you, that usage is building an audience and there's a business model behind that. But at the moment, uh, we're seeing that it's it's super affordable. In fact, we've given the majority of our publishers access to uh, tokens free of charge for the first couple of months, just so they can get used to what this can actually do for them. Thanks, Chad. We can take this one last question. It is related to the same pricing thing. That is AI module available separately or is it a part of a CMS? If it is part of a CMS, what is the cost of the CMS? Okay, it's part of the CMS, and you know we are uh, we're a CMS whereby we don't charge a license for our CMS. It's based on your bandwidth consumption. So we have everything from clients who are spending you know a hundred dollars a month genuinely uh, to clients that are spending you know thousands of dollars a, a month because they are national newspapers. And it's really about their bandwidth consumption. So if you're if you're consuming half a terabyte's worth of bandwidth consumption, we would charge you accordingly. And that's how you would access uh, the Quintac CMS and the Quintac tech stack. It's super affordable because uh, every, every type of publisher of every size can use the Quintac CMS. Similarly, the AI functionality is part of that, but it's paid for module. As I said, it's $10 for 1,200 tokens. So it's part of that as, a, as an add-on to, to what we would offer. Cool. I think that's enough, Chad. We'll probably take other questions offline and maybe re respond them or email. Okay, perfect. So happy to answer any of these questions in a bit more detail. I am in the US for uh, well over a month and possibly uh, even longer. Happy to meet anybody. Happy to have a one-to-one a, a -one discussion. Uh, even having a chat with you about what you're currently doing in AI, uh, more than happy to connect. Hope you enjoyed the session and uh, speak to you soon. Thank you.